Thanks, Terry. I'm having a good time. So am I, Pete. It's a good time. These are great stories. Um, what I'd like to do is the kids are into some serious stuff and by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and and they're, in Lorraine's accounts and in your own accounts, we see stories of the kids naming big demonic spirits. Can you give me an example of one? Yeah, um, one example was um, Moroni and these little children, they said the name Moroni and they received that name um, from the Holy Spirit and they said we've got to, um, we've got to, uh, the children would say kill, they would use the word kill or um, um, kill this spirit, that's the, that's the words um, they would use to kill, kill these spirits. So, um, and sometimes we've got, I'll just, I'll just go here quickly, because sometimes we've got a definition of kill, but actually death is really the absence of God. The absence of God, you know, and out of the presence of God is only death. And so the children would use these expressions of, we've got to get Moroni. Now, um, there was things going on in the community, and this is an important um, point, because the Bible says in the book of Galatians that even Satan can appear as an angel of light. And the devil was appearing to some of the children as an angel. Their, lot, their eyes were open now in the spirit, and he would come to try and deceive. And Lorraine, a very good teacher, and Lorraine began to discern, ah, oh, there's something that just doesn't sound right. And so Lorraine said to the children, okay, we're going to have a lesson here tonight and the scripture says in the book Corinthians no one can say that Jesus Christ is Lord without the Holy Spirit so um, Lorraine said to the children as soon as an angel appears to you no matter how pretty it looks how hey, you've got to say to the angel straight away who do you serve and the ones who serve God immediately they'll say the Lord Jesus Christ the ones who don't serve God, they'll try and make a deal with you. They'll stay quiet and you'll say, oh, you know me. They'll do everything, but they won't answer the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Lorraine said, straight away, you get your sword and you cut them to bits. So that that was happening a bit where the, um, Satan was appearing to the, or the, as an angel of light, or um, the devils were appearing as angels of light. So the children began, they got a quick lesson on discerning of spirits. And so they... Um, no angel could say um, the Lord Jesus Christ if they um, were um, not serving the Lord Jesus Christ. So, but these um, the children they were hearing in the spirit, and they said another thing that what they said at sing along. They said, when you begin to share your testimony of what Jesus has done, it says that the evil spirits they start to suffocate in that atmosphere. They actually can't breathe in that atmosphere. And they have to leave that whole atmosphere because of they suffocate. They can't, um, when you're telling of what Jesus has done and what you've seen and what you've heard, those devils actually suffocate in that atmosphere and they have to move away from where it is, which it's just more glory in that place. And so we had a, one night, they, the children said, we're going to do um, battle with Moroni. So here we are out on the on the on the field and it was set up that they saw the spirit again so they're literally to, sorry to interrupt they're literally on this corroboree ground yeah so it's literally they're dancing in the gates of hell yeah well they they would see gates open yeah out, in this in this place they would see the children would actually see gates open and then um hordes sometimes hordes of evil spirits coming and then we'd be there with weapons and that once cannons, but you know those old time catapults. Yeah. The Lord would have; He would make every everything fun because it says that we're far above the principalities and powers. So the Lord would make like to show them the victory that they had with these things. So we'd have this mighty artillery, and when people join hands, it's like the weapons get more power, and like in unity, unity brings like a greater. Mm -hmm. um, uh, greater artillery and um, so that night we had the the um, battle um, with with Moroni and saw a victory and this other God had us pray for the children we need to pray for cities around the world now instantly sometimes we didn't see things instantly happen but we knew things happened 
and sometimes you, you don't see things happen till after a while. And um, that that's what happened with the, the spirit of, of Moroni. So so Moroni is, the, of course, the, 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 the demonic angel. The angel, angel who gave the, Joseph Smith the Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon, yeah. And the, how, so, how so, are the so children going to know? No, they're not going to know. They're, yeah. And so um, the children didn't know that, but when they said Moroni, that's when the rain is picked up and said, how do the children know about this? we got to... And so that's when, wow, we're all going, wow, there's something happening here again, because there's no way that the children would know the names of these evil spirits now, without the, the Holy Spirit. Lorraine did add something to the end of that story. About 18 months later, around November 1997, all right, what happened? There, there, there was a Mormon church in Elliot. Yeah, and it, it closed down. Okay, so earlier it's about 20, 25, 28 k's from Newcastle Water yeah, Station yeah. where the settlement was. Yeah. So it closed down. Yeah. And they all went and joined the AIM church the in, AIM, in Elliot. Yeah, yeah. That's a great story, it is, Terry. It's, it's wonderful to... God, um, see, so sometimes the things that we do, it says in the Word, in the Book of Corinthians, that God's chosen the base things of this world to confound the wise. And we read in the Old Testament that what God told the prophets to do, sometimes it looked foolish, but what the repercussions of a prophetic action, sometimes in the natural is amazing. I remember a story of a man, um, the Lord told him to pull a, to pull a rock out of the yeah. wall in um, the, the big Berlin Wall. Yeah. And all the Holy Spirit said prophetic action to pull one rock out and that would begin a momentum. So the, the little things that we do, in the in the realm of the spirit, they seem insignificant, but in the realm of the spirit, God just Mighty. needs that faith. Thanks, mate. Mm, that's a pleasure. That's thing. awesome. Thank it's, you it's so much. It's a pleasure to tell tell those stories, and I love that people are interested to what, hear about. What them. what excites me is that you guys are still in contact with yeah. um, with these children now, as yeah. you say, growing up with families that they, are going. They are well. The, the, those children, they they showed me heaven. One one little boy, he went to heaven. And he said, Brother Terry, he come back. I was carrying him up to his, because um, he was only, he hadn't started school yet. And he said, Brother Terry, Jesus told me to tell you that um, I went to your house. And then he went back to sleep again. <laughs> Hallelujah. And anyway, then he woke up again before, I, and he said, Jesus told me to tell you that your house is near the park. Of course, Jesus knows that he loved the children. And then I burst out crying, here yeah. I am a grown man. Because only God could know that, Peter. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful times. They still touch my heart. Now those stories. All those, um, over 20 years later. Now we did get opposition, Peter. And in, it was in the late 90s that a, a group came from Papua New Guinea. And people were wondering about the stories because they were really, sometimes they're really out there, especially when you start to talk about the weapons that you get. And, and people say, that's really out there, but you just got to share what you've seen and what you heard. And then this group came from Papua New Guinea and they began to share stories that were happening in Oro province in Papua New Guinea. And that the, they said we would have sing-along and the children would go out in the spirit and they'd start to go to heaven. And when they had a crusade and some people came down from earlier and everybody turned around and looked at those Aboriginal people because they saw there was a movement of God in Papua New Guinea that was um, quite the same as so, what was so going on. So at last there was acceptance. There, yeah, it was like, last wow, was somebody was confirming, yeah, confirming. that, that um, wow, God's doing, God's doing amazing stuff. They would get um, Jacob's Ladder in Papua New Guinea. What they'd be doing, they were singing, and the children would go out in the spirit and they'd say, here comes Jacob's ladder, here comes Jacob's ladder. They'd, they'd be all saying, and the grown-ups are going, what? Yeah, here come. And all of a sudden they'd hear it, something hit a tin roof. Bam! And the whole little village could hear the thing. And as soon as Jacob's ladder hit, hit uh, a village roof, all the kids, do 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 will all go out in the spirit and they'd go, <laughs> all go to heaven. As soon as that bang on the, on the roof, it was like a the kids would just go in the spirit to heaven and go up into heaven. Mate, we could keep this up all night. There's, but there's glory, eh? Yeah, but it's not going to happen. I've got to call a stop. You're okay. Thanks, mate. That's a pleasure, Pete. It's